All right, so I've got a special video for you guys here. Some of you, in fact, have seen this video before. So clear back in season 10, I tried to do a Luke the Notable type video. So if you're not sure who that is, he's a guy that used to drop into Fortnite a hundred times and record every single match and summarize each one. So like I said, I tried that. And in fact, Luke the Notable himself commented on the video. So the video I did back then actually took me the entire season. I started recording around a week into season X and I finished right before the season ended. What I was trying to do was take a brute mech all the way to the final circle, AKA a 1v1 every single game and record the outcome. So I dropped over 200 times. Now, if you weren't aware, the mechs were incredibly overpowered, but they got nerfed several times throughout the season. So at the start of season 10, they were horribly overpowered, but then towards the end of season 10, they were kind of weak. So I dropped over 200 times trying to take the mech to the end of a game and win the game. And I only managed to do it 10 single times. I think the video took me over seven days to fully edit. I had to go through all 200 drops. I had to find the 10 games. I had to edit those down. I had to do the commentary and then I uploaded it. And back then I didn't have as many subscribers obviously as I do now and it barely got any views at all. And I was so sad. This video was the longest one I've ever worked on and I felt like a lot more people should have seen it. So fast forward to today, I was looking through that video and I thought, hey, why don't I just try to re-upload that? It's nostalgic, it's season 10 vibes, and it was a good video in my opinion. So I'm gonna try that right now. So like I said, a few of you, if you've been a long time subscriber to my channel, would have seen this video already but it's completely unedited just as I made it way back then and I'm just re-uploading it so everyone can enjoy it. Now, if you've never seen or been in a brute mech before, then this is gonna be incredible because like I said, it was super overpowered. Everyone complained about it, then they nerfed it and it was much, much harder to get a limbs, but I persevered and it was the most fun I've ever had in Fortnite. Season X is one of my favorite seasons of all time. So without further ado, here's what happened in the 10 games I managed out of 200 to take a brute mech all the way to the end game 10 times. Season 10 in Fortnite Battle Royale is finally drawing to a close. If there's one thing people probably won't miss about this season, it's the vastly overpowered Brute Mech. This war machine was responsible for making more players quit this game than even the double pump. Despite the Brute being incredibly overpowered, I wanted to see if it was possible to take it all the way to the end of a match 10 times. It may not seem that difficult at first, but I upped the difficulty level by doing solos only. If two people manned a brute, it went from Super Saiyan to Super Saiyan God, simply because it gained mobility, firepower, and you couldn't self-destruct it. Everyone should be able to agree that a solo brute was much, much easier to dispose of. So I'll be showcasing just the highlights from each match. For those of you that think this would be an easy challenge, trust me, it wasn't. I consider myself a decently skilled player with almost a thousand wins. And I only managed to take a brute to the end game 10 times in about 200 matches. Surviving an onslaught of bullets in a brute the entire match with people trying to land on you and self-destruct is no easy task. Not to mention you have to be able to both move and fire the mech all by yourself in solos. And then of course have the skill level to make it to the very end of a match. So there's the intro for this video. I took a brute mech to the end circle in a solo match 10 times and this is what happened. In game one, I decided to land at my favorite spot, Fatal Fields. And this was at the very start of season 10. So you should be aware that the Brute was at its most overpowered state here. This was before any of the nerfs and no one knew that you could counter it with boogie bombs or by jumping in and self-destructing it. Now, despite landing here initially, I didn't encounter my first enemy until there were only 23 people left. I was playing cops and robbers with my foe and decided to shove a few rockets up his pie hole. When that failed, I decided to ball bull charge him and he even opened up his criminal hideout to make it easier for me. I found my first brute with 13 people left in the match. Now remember, at this stage in the brute's life cycle, anything you King Kong bundied with your foot gave you materials. So getting max materials in less than 30 seconds was insane. I encountered my first enemy with eight people left, giving him a Macho Man Randy Savage elbow drop from the top rope in the process. There was also a second brute trying to gank all my kills and destruct me at the same time. 
Now watch here as the entire lobby focuses on me. This is exactly what I was talking about. Gunfire galore directed solely at me. I sprayed some missiles at a cluster of enemies and managed to take out two of them somehow. This other guy boxed up, but I huffed and puffed his little wooden house down. With just three enemies left, I took the time to get some of the spoils of war. Now it was time to double down my efforts. You'll see just how powerful these missiles truly were at the start of the season. I easily dispatch of two of the enemies with very little effort. The last guy, however, was sneaking around cautiously, and rightfully so. He knew his time on the battlefield was limited. With a six-man audience spectating in awe of my cheaty mech powers, the last turd Ferguson finally reared his ugly head, sniping me right in my dome shield. Unfortunately for him, I deployed my shield overcharge and became immune to damage there. I then unleashed a terrifying barrage of missiles and shotgun pellets, which of course quickly conquered my foe. In my first game attempting this challenge, I secured a 7 kill victory royale. In game 2, I landed at the block since I knew exactly where the legendary chest was. Now obviously, game 2 wasn't directly after game 1. I think I did this one a few days later. After looting up at the block, I made my way to the circle. I didn't encounter a single enemy this entire match as the endgame circle was near Paradise Palms. And in fact, I found my first brew with only 5 people left. There was a decent battle going on just in front of me, so I tried my best at some long range combat. Despite the missiles reaching that far, I wasn't able to do any damage. I tried a second time, this time moving a little closer, but still I didn't have any luck. At this point, I felt entirely too exposed, so I retreated off towards the mountains. Unfortunately, some butt-faced beaver lit my mech up for a hefty amount of damage, and I was forced to run again. So with less than 100 HP left, I made a final stand. But then I got sniped, and my robot began self-destructing. Just my luck though, someone boxed me up another brute. He wasn't at full health, but I freed the mighty warrior from his prison and helped locate the scumbags that locked him up. I spotted a build battle on a hill, and I shot a volley of missiles in that direction, securing a direct hit and thus getting a kill. At the same time, I took a sniper shot from my right side. My focus was still on the hill, however, as one more enemy remained up there. Oddly enough, the sniper decided to focus on this guy as well, which was a huge mistake. After scoring another long-range kill, it was time to engage Lee Harvey in an epic showdown. Sniper versus Brute. I made it easy for him by going directly in the open, and he scored a direct headshot on my dome, breaking it. But my missiles did more damage than this man did the entire match, and he died a quick death. Game 2 resulted in a victory royale, despite only 3 kills overall. Now Game 3 started out much like Game 2. I liked this particular block mainly because of that legendary chest location. I looted up uncontested for a good chunk of the match, but then I heard someone tiptoeing around below me, and somehow he didn't have any shield whatsoever and my one sniper shot disposed of him. As luck would have it, the circle was in my favor and very close. And to top it off, a brute dropped right on my doorstep. So I got in this with 16 people left and farmed up material. It wasn't until four people were left that a Battle of the Titans was underway. If you thought a Godzilla fight was entertaining, you've never witnessed a brute on brute battle. It's absolute total carnage. Which by the way, was one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. Now I will admit, this purple Barney looking mech pilot got a few good licks on me throughout the fight. However, if I'm the Red Baron in the skies, I'm the Gundam wing of the Brutes, and I eventually outsmarted him in the end. Not only did I cold cock his Brute into oblivion, I did a map stage fatality on him and he plummeted 26 meters to his death. After the fight, I healed up in the treetops just in time for a 1v1 situation to begin. I must have searched the hilly landscape for about 30 seconds before Five of the Mouse came peeking his head out. With the storm on his back and the Grim Reaper in front of him, he had no choice but to swallow a few of my ballistic missiles and quite literally choke the match. Game 3 was deja vu of Game 2 for me, resulting in a victory royale with a mere 3 kills overall. In Game 4, I landed at my second favorite landing spot, and this is the isolated mansion just outside of Pleasant Park. This place potentially has 3 chests, a campfire outside, a vending machine inside, and mushrooms all around it. Once looted up, I hiked over to Pleasant Park and engaged a sweaty tryhard. Upon viewing this match in replay mode, this guy already had 7 kills. But the combination of me blindsiding him, the confusion with my crappy combat pro builds, and my slow sensitivity threw him off his game. He ultimately ate a drum shotgun sandwich to the face and was no more. After healing and looting up a bit more, I encountered my first brute with only 16 people left. 
I ran into absolutely no one for the next few minutes, but then found a second brute with six people remaining. Now here's where I performed a tactical Tabor Hill maneuver, something I call the sack lunch. I box up great items, or in this case, a mechanical war machine, only to come claim them later when I'm in need. Normally I'll do this with chug jugs that I can't hold. I then hopped back in my OG brute and scouted for kills. As luck would have it, I found a little house on the prairie just waiting to be bamboozled. The occupant was a streamer, by the way, who was somehow caught off guard by my missile barrage and died the good death. At this point, my brute senses were tingling as someone was creeping up on my sack lunch. Rushing over there, I found the Hamburglar mid-thief attempt and quickly engaged in battle. He did a negative 5 IQ play and placed a trap, only to be disintegrated by 10 rockets of his keister. He did manage to scrape up my big Hero 6 companion, however, so I ditched my OG friend for my sacked lunch counterpart. The Sensu Bean worked wonders and I was now at full health and ready to stomp the competition. With two people left, I quickly charged their ongoing fight and got to work. One guy tried to pathfinder his way to victory on a zipline, but sadly got caught up in a few rocket rides, compliments of me. In the 1v1 situation that resulted, this guy knew his fate was sealed and tried desperately to blow up my brute before the clock struck midnight. Sadly though, he turned into a giant pumpkin and I imploded him. This sealed the 5 kill victory royale of game 4. At the halfway point in game 5, a purple vending machine caught my eye as I was on my way towards Junk Junction. The payoff was a scar, which is always a nice starting weapon. An enemy was kind enough to have also placed a launch pad, which I utilized to secure a challenge of landing at a hot spot. In the background, however, I noticed an enemy blazing up, which I quickly headed toward, again, compliments of his launch pad. Now, I'm not sure what or who wounded him so badly, but he was an easy target to eliminate. I found my brute near the block with 16 people remaining. After getting a boatload of materials with it, I didn't engage my first enemy until only four players remained. I heard a solo gunman shooting another brute in the distance, and instead of engaging the brute myself, I went for the smaller target. Unfortunately though, he turned his attention towards me and I took quite a bit of damage before taking his life. With only 96 health left and two more enemies to go, I didn't think I'd survive this one. However, as luck would have it, I found a single box outside of Tilted Town. I assumed it was from a previous battle, but again, luck was on my side and the occupant was bamboozled. With one enemy remaining and a rotating circle quickly approaching, I had to search fast. I heard building alongside the mountain and I Yokozuna splashed in that direction, hitting him for a whopping 140 damage. Obviously concussed in real life from the massive blow, he built like a newbie booby, even failing to secure a launch pad in time before the rocket sealed his fate. Game 5 was a 4 kill victory royale, compliments of my brute. Now game 6 is the turning point in the brute warfare saga. I landed in the temporary location Pandora, which if you weren't aware gave you full shield instantly. Now I say this was the turning point because this game was a day after the massive nerf to brutes. The rockets were reduced, the explosion radius was shrunk, the mobility was cut in half, and you couldn't farm mats anymore. The brute was at an all time low in this gameplay strength wise. As I was looting up in Pandora, some black sock wearing wisp man tried to ambush me. With only a shotgun and a scoped AR, I somehow bested him with three straight pumps, all connecting. And by the way, this was my first game ever with the iconic skin, which is why I was doing the scenario dance. My dance was cut short, however, as I heard two nearby enemies fighting. Despite having an SMG now, I still relied heavily on my pump, for some reason not swapping to a follow-up weapon. I learned my lesson on the second guy, however, and after pumping him in the chest for diddly squat damage, I finished him off with my burst SMG. And then, of course, tested out the scenario dance once more. Now, I found my first brute with only 10 people left. And again, as luck would have it, there were two people directly in front of me with all kinds of structures waiting to be demolished. You can see just how bad the brute is in these clips. The rockets were noticeably way slower, and the blast radius is cut drastically in half. It just didn't have that same destructive power. With that said, when you fight enemies that aren't trying to escape, of course it'll still get you some kills. This game was also the introduction of the new dome shield item, which this second enemy put fully on display after I hit him with a few love taps. So after repositioning, the enemy tried to launch on me and self-destruct. But I faked an explosive burst jump and Barry Sanders juked him, which threw him completely off target. 
With the high ground now secured for me, I rained ballistic missiles on his newly built stick house and he bit the dust. And with that, I was in a 1v1 situation. I almost felt bad for my enemy since I was also in Pandora, which means unlimited shields. I edged a little closer, trying my best to stay in Pandora. As the onslaught began, my enemy tried his best to fight back, pushing at me with all the force his little John Wick self could muster. In the end though, his best just wasn't good enough, even for a nerfed brute. My brute managed to do what three John Wick movies couldn't do, eliminate the legend from the face of the earth. Game 6 was a 6 kill victory. Now game 7 started with me landing at Pressure Plant to complete a challenge. This match was on the exact same day as game 6, which again was when the brute was at its weakest point in season 10. There was absolutely no competition at Pressure Plant, and I found my first brute fairly early with 61 people remaining. Sadly though, I had to rotate the entire length of the match before I found my first target with 20 people left. As it turns out, it was a female soccer skin. And let me tell you, there's nothing more satisfying than bopping one of these players. Now if we fast forward a bit, my brute took some significant damage as I tried my best to gain the high ground. I then engaged on the man responsible for my damaged goods. He tried to avoid me by building a relentless supply of ceilings and pyramids. But I simply countered this by aiming ahead of him repeatedly and eventually he succumbed to the cat and mouse game. Now with the circle eliminating my high ground, I had to take a leap of faith and I landed right in front of another enemy. Despite 152 health left and spitting sparks, this guy thought I was Thanos and went for my head. This of course was a big mistake and he paid for it with his life. However, the damage was done. With 28 health left, I took a shot from the last man left which imploded my brute. This was the first match I've successfully lost a brute in the last circle. To make matters worse, he bopped me in the face with a few nice shots as well. So with the death of Krillin the mech fresh on my mind, I decided to go Super Saiyan and whip out the Kamehame minigun. With 100,000 bullets raining down on him per second, I'd like to believe that he regretted ever laying a finger on my brute as he was turned to dust. The relentless volley of bullets and redemption of my lost mechanical mate gave me a 4 kill victory royale. Now game 8 was again on the exact same day as the last two games. You can also tell by my repeated wearing of the iconic skin, which I also received on this same day. I landed at Lazy Lagoon and took half the match to loot up. Somehow though, I was blindsided by an enemy with 32 people remaining. Now I should have been dead here, but I made good use of the dome shield and completely outsmarted and outplayed my opponent. By rotating in and out of my dome shields and using the rocks as natural cover, he was no match for my situational awareness. Acquiring his minigun, I moved onto the ship and encountered a friendly bot pillaging for loot. The minigun proved too much for him and he was quickly overwhelmed. Little did I know, however, another stowaway came bull charging at me. He was a bit smarter and hit me several times with the combat shotgun, going out in a blaze of glory. Now fast forward to the end game, still without a brute, I managed to minigun yet another enemy who didn't seem to care that his life was ending. It was with four enemies left that I grabbed the brute and climbed to the treetops. Two enemies were duking it out and you can see just how nerfed the brute missiles were at this point. No splash damage from nearly all of my rockets here. However, with a continued attack, I managed to eventually get one of them. I spent the next 30 seconds chasing the retreating enemy with my rockets, while the final guy sat back and watched, occasionally plinking me with a sniper. Now if he was smart here, he would have sprayed my brute at this point to make me self-destruct. I eventually finished off the retreating scallywag and doubled down on the clueless sniper. The problem was, I couldn't see him or hear him. I broke a few trees down and eventually saw him scurry like a cockroach, at which point, of course, I stomped a mud hole in him. This resulted in a 7 kill victory royale. Game 9 was a turning point in brute warfare. By this time, everyone knew how to counter the brute. This was recorded near the end of the season, but the brute received another buff. They basically reversed the reduction to splash damage from earlier in the season. So the brute was once again powerful, despite still having a nerf to materials, rockets, and mobility. So I landed at Shifty Shafts and was quickly overwhelmed, and I ran away like a sissy Barbie girl. Luckily, a brute landed near Tilted Town with 57 people left. Now I had a challenge where I needed to get damage with high ground, so I perched atop a mountain and waited for unsuspecting enemies. I blasted one guy into oblivion, noting that the splash damage was definitely back in full force. After looting my kill, I heard footsteps far below me, so like an eagle stalking his prey, I rained down fire and brimstone on this poor rotating player, eventually getting the better of him in this survival of the fittest battlefield. As I was turning back to rotate towards the circle, I was once again approached from behind. 
Not wanting to let any kill escape, I quickly disposed of this advancing foe with little effort. Now once I secured my spot in the next circle, a true newbie booby came auto running by. I did feel bad, but it had to be done, and I put him down with as little pain as possible. Now here's where things got hairy. I bushed my way into the gunner's seat and decided to randomly spray a structure. As it turns out, there was someone camping inside. Now fast forwarding a little, I engaged a true competitor, someone with an actual RPG. The problem was, I didn't know it yet. As I engaged his fortress with my rockets, he launched a ball of fire directly at me, which I couldn't react fast enough to. Then we both reloaded and returned fire on each other, but this time I was already adapting. When I saw the second rocket come my way, I instantly countered it with a dome shield. Now I'd like to believe the last thing this guy thought before my rocket entered his face was whoa, nice play. At this point, it was a 1v1 situation and I had 637 health left. I definitely got cocky and thought I had it in the bag. I assumed I was up against a clueless enemy, but he launched a barrage of grenades at me and I couldn't sidestep them. Despite hitting him with a few blasts myself, he kept reapplying shield. So at this point, I got in his face with only 29 health left, but he got a few more hits on me and destroyed my robotic machine. Once again, fueled by rage of my lost friend, I displayed my crappy builds in full force. But I got the last laugh as I dropped my pyramid stare down and blasted his face off, much to his surprise. Game 9, despite losing another brute, resulted in a 7 kill victory royale. So here we go, the final countdown, game 10. I decided to land at the block for this one. This game was right before the new aim assist changes on console, and I was trying to get a clip of the L2 spamming. As you've seen by my gameplay, I never L2 spammed a target before. But in this clip, again, I was purposely doing it to test it out before the removal of it. As you can see, it worked fairly decently and I was able to take out one guy and severely damage the second before swapping to my shotgun. Now at this point, I decided to go on a sniping spree. Using the purple heavy sniper, I whiffed on a Marty McFly hoverboarder, but managed to land a nice headshot as he toppled down. I quickly looted my kill and then observed a build battle somewhat close by. I saw an opportunity for a 150 damage foot shot and secured it nicely. The remaining enemy thought the coast was clear and tried to escape, only to get half his head blown off in the process. Now as I continued on, an enemy launched right over my head and I dinged him twice, but not for much damage. He landed off in the distance, assuming his safety. Little did he know, I was Doc Holliday in this game and I bamboozled him with a 209 meter snipe. It was at this point I found my first brute of the match. With only six people left, I hopped in and got to work by spraying a mountainside hideout. This guy quickly retreated to the other mountain and I tried to give chase, but I was hit from the left by a camping scallywag. He quickly realized he bit off more than he could chew and he panicked as I pushed right towards him. Despite his best efforts to bum rush me, the shotgun and missile combo was just too much to handle and he became my seventh kill. Now the game wanted me to win at this point, as both enemies were on top of the mountain and engaged in battle already. I made my way up there and sprayed the structures which instantly killed one of them. With the circle now creeping up behind me, I tried my best to end this as fast as possible, but my enemy decided not to go out without a fight. He continually evaded my missile barrage and shotgun blasts, trying desperately to survive. He was definitely a clever girl, lasering my metal frame each and every opportunity he had. Towards the end, I was down to 113 health, and so I went all in with a face-to-face -face charge. And he was caught off guard by this, and my shotgun disintegrated his face in a hero's death. This resulted in a 9-kill victory royale for my 10th and final game. And that, as they say, is that. The Brute Mech is without a doubt going to be remembered as one of the most overpowered items ever in Fortnite. And my 10 games venturing to the end game with one shows exactly how powerful they were. In each game that I made it to the very end of a match with a brute, I won. All 10 games resulted in 10 victory royales. In two games, however, the brute was able to be destroyed in the final fight, but that didn't stop me from winning the match. So despite the lesser skilled players who no doubt enjoyed using these gigantic death machines, it's safe to assume that most people will not be sad to see them go come the next season.